current situation. Hi, welcome to Fiber Love Diary. If we haven't met yet, I'm Trish, and if we have, you're probably a subscriber, and I appreciate you. Um, I wanted to remind you guys, we're getting to the end of the month. It's the 29th. I had to think for a second. And the giveaway ends on midnight of the 31st. And it's going to be my time zone. I'm in the Eastern Standard Time Zone. I just want to let you guys know that. And as a reminder, I will be drawing for two, give two prizes for the giveaway. So they're going to be drawn in the order they were announced. I will draw for a winner of a spinning box. This is a February 2019 spinning box in case you want to search what's in it. And your choice of these two green bats I carded in a previous episode. I don't want to take them out of the plastic because I want to protect them for the winter. I do know which is which. I will post a link to the video where I showed them um, and so you can see them better. And then the other prize is a March 2019, let's get this the right way, Paradise Fibers box. Um, they sent this as PR for me and I'm giving it to you guys. And they are so awesome there. They're just so helpful and, and so cool and they have such cool stuff. So check them out. And the winner will also get their choice of whichever green bat does not get picked and this purple bat that has, has silk blended in. I will also link to the video where I show that better. I just don't, I want to keep them in the plastic so they're protected for the new owners. So you guys, the way you can enter still is by commenting on a video uploaded in March of 2019. And good luck okay the housekeeping is done I just wanted to make a quick video because a subscriber s Cummins I don't know even if you're a man or a woman I don't know if your name is Sarah or Stanley but anyway um, asked about the size of my 32 inch rigid head of loom so we're gonna talk about it a little bit here first and then I'm going to show you what it looks like when I weave on the whole width of the loom. A little backstory. I have been knitting for 40 years this summer so I'm almost at 40 years. I've been spinning for 12 and I love every step of the process. I'm like a process person and this might not sound like it makes sense in the context but it, it will I promise. I enjoy even taking like fleece all the way every step from raw to clean to processed to dyed to blended if I'm going to I like every piece of the process I enjoy it all and that's why I do it and I feel like if you don't enjoy part of it like if you don't enjoy the washing and the processing send it out like only do the part you love it's not worth it your life's short you only have so much time to do fun things so that brings me to the weaving I got my loom just about a year ago. Um, I actually bought it used from somebody that I, I think on Ravelry, who was selling it and it was a pretty good deal for what I got. I got like seven petals. It has a double heddle kit already installed. It's a 32 inch Ashford and it had a stand. So, and I didn't really know if weaving was gonna be my thing. It looked to me like warping was not going to be fun for me. I know some people love it and like, that's cool. I get it. But, um, I just wasn't sure. So I bought a used one and I thought, well, I can always like pass it on if I don't love it. What I'm finding is that I love being able to weave hand spun that doesn't look, I don't want to say it doesn't look great, but that, that I don't love the look of when I knit. Sometimes when you can weave that hand spun, it is absolutely gorgeous. And so I like being able to do that. I actually love planning projects. I love everything I've woven pretty much, but I don't love the weaving process. And so I'm still kind of fighting with myself over the whole thing. Like, because I've always been a process person, and I don't enjoy this process that much. I'm just not really sure. So what would you do? I am curious, like, 
if you love the product or really like the product, do you would you keep it and just see if you begin to love the process? Because right now I, I don't. And that brings me to my current project, which we're about to actually watch me weave on. Um, I worked my full width of my 32 inch Ashford double. So right now what's happening is I'm weaving a double width piece of cloth, which is actually like folded in half. So when you are weaving, you're basically like, I'm not sure how this is gonna show up, but you're weaving kind of like in a sideways V that opens on one end. So you are going like this, back and forth, if that makes sense. I personally think, for me, it didn't make much sense until I actually fully warped it and then did it. Um, but I think maybe some people are more capable of like visualizing it than I was. The way it works is you're using two different heddles to make four different sheds. So I don't know if other people are like this, maybe it was just me, but I didn't really understand what I, what I was watching because nobody really explained it. So each position of the heddles just takes one section of thread. So basically like half a layer up or down. So it's like there's one shed worth of threads down and three up on your first one and you go down go through and then on this one there's one up and three down if that makes sense so then you go back through this way then you have the opposite up one and still three down see it's so hard to understand until you actually do it so if you're trying to learn this i really would recommend you do it with just like maybe 10 slots and holes just so you can understand how it works because it's a lot of warping especially if you get it all done and you're like okay i hate this and that's what happened to me so i fully warped i think it's like nine feet so three yards just under three meters um 640 ends of is that right? 640? Hmm. I think that's right. I think I used a 10 dent heddle. I did. Sorry. 10 dent heddle, 32 inches, double. So it's 640. And you guys, this is the, the kicker that is going to make you laugh. But I'm always honest with you guys on here. Maybe too honest. I picked a tweed yarn that I had on a cone. I don't even know where I got it. I think it's acrylic, I'm not even sure. And it's so sticky, I can barely get the sheds to open. It's terrible, it's really, really bad. So don't do this. But when you've warped three yards or just under three meters or, cause isn't a meter like 39 inches? I'm pretty sure that's right. When you have warped 640 ends, nine feet, and you've got it warped correctly. I mean, it's correct. It's just that the warp is so sticky. It's really a pain in the butt. You do not want to cut it off. It's so much waste. Like I'd be wasting the heck out of all this yarn and I don't like the piece I'm weaving at all. What I'm using for weft is actually a like end table that doubles as like a storage bucket for my sock ends. And so I'm like weaving random amounts and I am also like switching back and forth between two colors <laughs> because I never do anything the simple way, but it's good for you because then you get to see like how to really mess up or how to really succeed or how to make something horrible. This is not good. This project is not beautiful, but you'll get to see what it's like to weave on a 32 inch width, fully warped Ashford loom. Now, I'm 5'10", so I am tall and my arms are long. I am still finding this a bit challenging to weave the whole width of the loom. In fact, I was at knitting last night and another knitter said, oh, I saw there was a 48 inch rigid head of loom for sale and she was maybe 5'2", I'm guessing. And I said to her like, 
I'm not saying don't do it, but I'm saying it might be a challenge for you. So you're gonna see me wrestle around. Now you might be like, use a boat shuttle and throw it. Because this warp is so sticky and so challenging, I really can't do that. And also, I, I'm not in love with boat shuttle for rigid heddle. That's just me. You do you, you know? So watch me wrestle with this loom working on a piece that I don't like and I'll really just want to weave it off now so I can like maybe weave some hand spun or something. I don't know. But also do not forget to enter the contest. I cannot wait for someone to win. I'm so excited. You guys, I have discovered that giving a prize away is actually more fun than opening stuff that I'm going to keep. So I hope that you guys will enter and good luck to you. And I will be doing another giveaway at some point because it was so much fun for me. Oh, that reminds me. Also, I've been trying to figure out like when am I going to draw the winner I did commit to the first five days in April and oh, I'm scared to commit to an exact time but I'm gonna do it so I am gonna draw the winner on April 1st at 3 o'clock Eastern Standard Time and if I can get my setup right I'm gonna do it live now, if I can't get my setup right, I will draw it, record it, and get it up by five o'clock Eastern Standard Time. So if you can't find me at three o'clock or like five after three, just in case, you know, um, then come and look for it at five. You can always watch it later. You don't have to be there live to win. It's nothing like that. But if you wanna see it live, that's when I'll be on. Thank you so much, you guys. You are so fun and I appreciate you and all this extra interaction has been so fun for me. So thank you for that. Enjoy this S show of a weaving project.